Moses, when he was in Egypt, there he had a choice to make. One day while he was the great general in the army, he looked out of the same window that Pharaoh did. Pharaoh seen the Israelites of nothing but a bunch of mud daubers. Just slaves, they were no good. All the Egyptians looked up on them the same, but Moses couldn't see no beauty in them because they were ragged, they were poor, they were beaten. They were a rejected people by the world. And Moses standing with his foot on the throne. And yet by faith, looking at the unseen, Moses refused to be the son of Pharaoh because he knew he was the son of Abraham. I know you know I'm a fanatic. I'm fanatically about one thing that's Jesus Christ and his promises. Moses had rather be a son of Abraham than to be the son of Pharaoh. Why? He couldn't see it in the natural. If he's the son of Abraham, the mud pits was for him. The slaves whip. What was it? But he had recompense to the reward, for he endured his seeing him who is invisible, who made the promise. There you are. What choice are you making tonight here in Hollywood and Los Angeles and the fashion place of the world? Or the fine spires and the steeples and everything else. What choice are you making? Let me tell you, brother, sister, find that Holy Spirit that takes control in the heart and those pulsations begin to come that God is God and the things of the world will perish. Then you walk after the things you don't see. You'll become crazy to the people of the world. They'll say, well, that woman's lost her mind. That man's gone off at the deep end. Why, he says that he's healed of cancer. Why, he's healed of his blindness. He's healed of this, that, or the other. Or he says that he's received the Holy Spirit that's changed him. Why, he don't even associate in the pool room no more. We don't find him at the card table. This woman don't play the cards no more. She quit wearing uh, vulgar clothes. She become a new person. There's something wrong with her. Sure. Something happened to her. The old carnal mind died and the mind of Christ took the place in the woman's heart. And now she's walking, looking for a city where she'll be popular. Where she'll ride on the chariots with the sons and daughters of God. Where she'll be a, a guest of the Lord Jesus forever. She's looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. She cares not about the pollution of the world. See, she's been enthroned by something else. God has come into her heart and it just blackened out the fashions of the world. That's first. When he takes control, then I want you to notice that what Moses did when he got that vision of the unseen, here he was standing. There was a throne. All the world laid in his hand every pretty thing that could happen. The Pharaoh of Egypt and he had all the money, the women's, the beautiful girls, and, and all the social and all the popularity and, and the gaiety of the world laid at his hand. What did he look down in the mud pit? It could promise him nothing but poverty, a, a fall from the, the society that he was in, a turning his back upon the glo glaring things of the world. He had to go to the mud pits to become one of them. I remember some time ago when a certain denominational church that I was ordained in said, Billy, you go out with that bunch and you'll become a holy roller. But I looked out upon them. I seen a promise in them that they wasn't ashamed of the religion that they represented. I seen there were God's children called everything in the world, but I seen they were heirs of the promise and I took my place with them to become one of them. Now, it ain't to sympathize with them and say, oh, I think they're nice people. That don't do no good. You've got to become one of them. Moses didn't say, no, I sympathize with my people. I think they're nice and everything, but I'm up here and they're down there. No, Moses went to become one of them. Because he endured his seeing him who was invisible. He didn't walk by sight. He walked by faith, the unseen. 
something happened to him. 